Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Sam from Historic Travels and welcome to another video. Okay guys, so hey, something that happens pretty frequently whenever I'm discussing the wreck of the RMS Titanic is I get asked questions about why specific areas of the wreck are the way that they are on the bottom of the ocean. You know, like they're curious as to how that part of the wreck ended up the way that it did after the sinking. So what I thought I would do for today's video is try to answer some of those questions. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that Titanic ROV game that I've been talking about lately, and we're going to navigate the sub over the wreck of the Titanic, and then we're going to narrow in on a few key areas. And then if I can, I'll try to utilize animations, but I'm going to try to show you all and explain why these sections of the wreck are the way that they are. And it is my hope that by watching this, you'll have an above average understanding as to why certain sections of the wreck of the Titanic are the way that they are. Now, I'm not gonna be covering everything in this video. I'm actually planning to make this a series of videos. So in this episode, we'll talk about a few things. In another episode, we'll talk about a few things. And yeah, this is just something we're gonna do on occasion. And guys, I am looking for feedback here. So let me know your thoughts and everything as we do these series of videos together. Let me know in the comments below. And yeah, with the intro out of the way, let's get into it. And we are back, everybody. Welcome to VROV Titanic, the amazing Titanic game created by the Magellan team that made the amazing digital recreation of Titanic using 700,000 photos. I mean, can you believe that? It's absolutely insane. All right. So we're going to go over a few key areas of the bow section today. That's going to be the point of this video. We'll look at the stern later. But today we're going to be focusing on the bow. Now, when we're going to the wreck, I'm going to set it to easy just so you guys can see the entire wreck. And we're going in now. And audio levels seem okay. Let me make a quick adjustment. All right. I think we're all right. All right. So there's the bow of the Titanic, okay? Now, the first thing that we're going to be talking about in this video is why the bow of the Titanic is the way that it is on the bottom of the ocean okay so if you take a look at the front of the ship right here and just follow the line on the screen to whatever i'm looking at you'll notice that the front of the bow is dug in all the way up to the anchor now you need to understand how deep the bow is dug in if we take a look at this model right here okay right here's the anchor right there so this much space of the ship is buried in the bottom of the ocean let that sink in and the reason why that happened here let me make a quick adjustment to the audio levels because it seems like it's kind of loud so the reason why that happened there we go is due to the fact that when the after the titanic sank and was heading to the bottom the bow was kind of panning forward as it fell okay so if my hands the bottom of the ocean the bow slammed into the bottom of the ocean with some slight forward momentum and dug in all the way up to near the anchor. And then the rest of the bow section fell down like that. That's the reason why the bow is dug in the way that it is. And then the further aft we go along the bow section, you'll notice that more and more of the bow section is visible. And I'll show you guys a little bit more of that as we, get along, as we go along a little bit more. So there, now you understand why the bow, at least the front of the bow, is dug in so deep. Now, the next thing that I want to discuss is right here. This big, huge, giant opening in the Titanic's uh, bow, okay? Or in the uh, uh, folks hold deck. See, this right here, this is cargo hatch number one, okay? Now, on, when, now before the Titanic sank... There was this giant steel cargo hatch resting on top of it. So what happened to it? Why is it gone now? You know, that should still be there, right? Well, that has to do with what happened. Like the reason it's gone, it's due to what happened to the bow after it hit the bottom. Okay, so this cargo hatch isn't missing. We know exactly where it is. It's not in this animation, but it's actually thrown way out there. Like, it's thrown, like, I forget exactly how far, but it's way out in front of the bow, just sitting out there in the bottom, like, sitting down there on the bottom of the ocean, okay? So it's way out there somewhere. I'll show some pictures of it here if I can find it. Now, the reason that happened is due to the fact that, so, as the Titanic was free-falling to the bottom of the ocean, okay, it had all of this water inside of it, all right? And that water is moving at the same speed 
as the bow section, okay? So, so as the bow goes down, all that water's in there with it. The bow slams into the bottom of the ocean, but all of that water inside of the ship, it still has motion to it, and it's looking for a way to escape. Some of it explodes out of a hole that forms in the ship's side. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. But some more of that water shoots out through the opening of cargo hatch number one. It shoots out with so much pressure that it severs every single bolt around this cargo hatch and sends the cargo hatch flying way out into the debris field. So that's why the cargo hatch is so far away on the bottom of the ocean, why it's missing. It's kind of like a hydraulic effect. But yeah, it just got flung way, way out there due to all of that pressure and all of that force in there. I mean, it's the ship's in motion, the water's in motion, the ship stops suddenly when it hits the bottom. That water's still in motion, and it's going to look for a place to go. And that's why it's blown apart like that. I mean, just the forces to snap all of those bolts all at once is just insane. <clears throat> all right, so we're moving further aft. The next thing that I want to talk about is the mast. All right, so this right here is the mast. I'm going all the way up and scanning it as I go, okay? Now, this is where the crow's nest was, okay? And at the very, very, the crow's nest was right about here. And in case you don't know what a mast is, a mast is the giant tower structure that housed the crow's nest. And then this is it right here, how it would have looked on the actual Titanic before it sank. And then there was also a giant wire that went from here, okay? all the way to the aft mass. And that big wire was like the ship's antenna for the Marconi wireless. It's how the ship received communications. Anyway, inside of the mast, there was a ladder. And the ladder is how Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee, the ship's lookouts, would get up and into the crow's nest. And it's from there that they spotted the iceberg and looked out for hazards that were in the ship's path. And that's the opening right there. And the crow's nest would have been like right here. It, it's gone. So, now, the reason why the mast is collapsed like this, well, okay, so there's two different ways the mast fell. When the wreck was first found in 85, the mast hadn't buckled in like this. It was still intact, just knocked over. I'll have some pictures of it here. It was simply fallen, but the structure of the mast hadn't, like, collapsed or, or anything. It just fallen over. And the reason why the mast fell over and back like this is due to what happened to the bow as it was heading to the bottom of the ocean, okay? So, after the Titanic left the surface, there was a huge amount of water rushing past the bow as the ship fell. And those forces were too much for the mast to handle, and it simply fell back and collapsed. And then it landed on top of the bridge and wheelhouse, okay? Now, when that happened... When that happened, the bridge and wheelhouse, they were just made of wood, okay? So they're very, very, like, light structures. They were well-built, but they weren't meant for all these forces. So the mast fell back, and it landed on the wheelhouse, which would have been about right here, okay? Or, I'm sorry, the navigation bridge. The navigation bridge and wheelhouse. So, this right here that you're looking at, this is the wheelhouse, okay? This is where the, one of the ship's three helms was located. The ship, the Titanic actually had three helms. One was on the stern, and the other two were on the bridge. This right here was the helm within the wheelhouse. The other helm would have been about right here. So the wheelhouse actually stretched out over the Titanic's A-deck uh, promenade level, okay? So it was right here. When the mast fell back after the ship sank and was heading to the bottom, it began to rip apart the wheelhouse. And that entire structure ripped away as the Titanic was falling to the bottom of the ocean. And then all that remained is just the, um, the ship's telemotor, which is right here. This is all that's left. And this is the wheelhouse. This would have been further back. So just to kind of give you a little bit more context, like just try to help you guys imagine it a little bit better. I'll have an image of what the wheelhouse looked like and navigation bridge looked like before the Titanic sank. But if we bring our ROV down and we position it just right, there we go. I want you to imagine the ship's wheel right here. Okay, this is where that wheel was. Quartermaster Hitchens was right here. And this was an enclosed structure. Do you remember the room in the James Cameron film where uh, Captain Smith was walking in t like walking up to the helm as the ship was sinking and Near My God to Thee was playing? That's what this space is right here, okay? And anyway, and then 
right here was the area where First Officer William Murdoch in the scene owed to Titanic when the Titanic was steaming away from Ireland. This is where like they grabbed the telegraph and like spent and told the ordered the engines full speed ahead and stuff like that. That would have been right here. But yeah, so these this area was destroyed by the mass collapsing and the forces of water shooting past it as the bow headed to the bottom of the ocean. Just crazy, crazy forces. And then the reason why the mast is like buckled down like this and collapsed inward, this is just effects from the the mast decaying on the bottom of the ocean due to undersea conditions. Like it couldn't hold itself up anymore. Now there is a little bit of a discussion over what exactly happened to the crow's nest. Because the crow's nest itself was here when the wreck was found in 85. It was collapsed, but it was here. And there's some debate that an ROV from another expedition might have knocked it over. Um, it could have simply decayed and fallen into one of these cargo hatches right here. But ultimately, it was there one dive, and then the next dive it was gone without us knowing 100% what happened to it. So, yeah. There we go from that. So there's a quick little overview of some of the stuff on the bow. Now, we're going to head over here to the ship's side. And I want to show where we at. Okay. And I want to show you guys something else pretty crazy. So remember earlier I talked about all of the forces that, like, how when the bow slammed into the bottom of the ocean, the water inside the ship, like, when the bow stopped, the water inside wanted to get out. And... Some of it blew off the cargo hatch right there, while other parts blew out this huge gaping hole in the ship's side right here. Now, actually, this hole was caused by two things. It was caused by the water inside the ship explosively ripping out. But the thing is, I don't know if the water would have been able to do that on its own without some massive damage occurring to this area first. And... Basically, what I'm talking about is, I want you to take a look at the bow, okay? See how the bow of the Titanic is dug in right here, but then the further aft we go, you see how more and more of the ship is just simply sitting at the bottom of the ocean? That's because these spots, like, it didn't dig in as deep, like, here. Only the bow dug in due to its slight forward momentum as it fell. Now, take a good look at how, see how the bow is more slanted down? than it is right over here, okay? So that's because when the bow slammed into the bottom of the ocean, the Titanic, in a sense, broke its back, and it caused the bow to become slightly more slanted than the further aft part. So right here, right here, you can see it right here. See how it's like the bow slopes downward right there, and then back here, where it wasn't as structurally damaged in the collision with the seafloor, it's normal. So, to better show you what I'm talking about, the bow, let me turn, the, ca the camera keeps turning on me, okay. The bow hits the bottom, it kind of breaks its back, and as it falls, the ship has a structural failure right along here, okay? And then this, the bow doesn't move as much, but then as the aft part of the bow section falls back, this, stop, this area remains more structurally intact, while the front of the ship kind of breaks its back right here, and it remains in that sloped down position. I hope that makes sense. I hope I explained that good. So yeah, that's what happened right there. And anyway, it was that act of flexing and warping and that structural failure that began to open up the hull right here and cause this massive opening to form, okay? This was not caused by an iceberg, like some people on the internet would want you to believe. This is not iceberg damage. This is from the hull flexing and warping, and then the water pressure inside explosively shooting out after the titanic hit the bottom of the ocean pretty crazy stuff now as far as iceberg damage some people say that you can find it in this game i've looked for it i haven't seen it but any iceberg most of the iceberg damage is buried underneath all of this and you can't see it okay but there might be some around here but i've looked for it and i can't find it it's it's just hard to see it might not be visible in the scan but the furthest iceberg damage that would be visible on the wreck would probably be the slight tear in Boiler Room 5, maybe Boiler Room 6, which it would be right around here. But like I said, I've looked for it, and I can't find it. So if anybody of you out there want to try to find it, uh, please share it on my Discord. Link for that in the description. I'd love to see it. Okay, so we're going to talk about one more thing in this video just to keep it from getting too long, and then we'll do more stuff later. All right? We're going to talk about something else that happened to the Titanic after it hit the bottom of the ocean. And that's the downblast. Okay? So, I want you to imagine the Titanic's bow 
falling to the bottom, all right? As it's going down, it's going down at speeds of somewhere between 20 to 30 miles an hour, okay? Well, this ship's weight, all right, it's pulling down roughly the same amount of weight in water, and that water is trailing behind the ship. So Titanic goes down, all of that weight in water is coming down behind. The ship's pulling that water with it, okay? When the Titanic slams into the bottom of the ocean and lays level, it's called a downblast. When all of that weight in water comes down and slams onto the Titanic itself. And all of that weight can do a lot of damage to the ship. So the water hits it at the top and then just spreads out. It's a huge blast, okay? Some of the damage to the Titanic's upper decks from that downblast are actually still visible to this day. There is, it's a little bit hard to tell what damage is from the down blast and what is from just natural decay. But if we would have come down here right after the sinking, it would have been very apparent. Some areas on the uh, officer's quarters, they show signs of like imprinting or pushing down. And that like, like they collapsed inward. That's from the down blast. Some of it anyway. Other parts are from the ship's natural decay. So like I said, it's hard to tell exactly what is from the down blast and what is from decay because it's been so long. But there is one pretty big piece of evidence of the down blast that you would probably not even think about. We're coming down. And it's these right here. Do you see all these open windows? These are very thick windows, okay? Why would these windows be open and not shattered? So, like, we have some shattered windows, like this one right here, but a majority of these windows are just simply open, and these were very heavily secured windows, you know, and it was freezing cold on the night the Titanic sank. The crew wouldn't have opened these windows. Well, the theory out there is that they were opened by the downblast. So the downblast came down, some of that water pressure got inside of the officer's quarters, and that water shot everywhere, and the force of that water hitting these windows, well, these were pretty thick windows. The glass was pretty thick. And the hinge, or the locking mechanism that was holding these windows to the ship, was weaker than the glass was itself. So when that water pressure hit these windows, they were simply blasted open, and they didn't shatter. So I thought that was pretty cool. That's a pretty cool and very interesting uh, piece of uh, what happened, and some pretty good evidence for the downblast, in my opinion. And the last thing we're going to touch on today, if you as you navigate around... All right, I want you to see, do you see like this imprint right here? And do you see how the decking is a slightly different color right here? Okay. Well, this was caused by ROVs or ROVs, submersibles landing on the Titanic itself. When the uh, ROVs, uh, ROVs, I keep saying ROVs, when the submersibles landed on the Titanic wreck itself, they were actually damaging the wreck. And the reason why RO submersibles would I did three times now the reason why they would land right here is because of this giant opening right here in the titanic and i will explain more what this giant opening is and why submersibles would have landed here in the next video and there you have it, guys. This concludes episode one of our Analyzing the Wreck of the Titanic series. I hope you learned some pretty cool information about the wreck, and now you have a above-average understanding of the wreck of the Titanic in the areas that we talked about. And I can't wait to see you guys in episode two as we explore and analyze the wreck further. All right, everybody. Well, hey, if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. It means a lot, and please hit that like button. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody.